right? We are live. We are in the right. building, live and direct, live and direct. We're here with <laughs> this is the Gray Sweatpants Show. It's your fam, it's your man, uh, John Adams. I'm here with my girl, April Dobbs, and obviously my boy, my king, my boy, AD. Oh, We're in the building, Gray Sweatpants Show, and we are live this morning with um, a man who has literally helped me see. Uh, <laughs> it is, hey, is, uh, hey. so it is a man who has literally helped me see it is uh my personal uh optometrist uh dr andrew williams he's joining us live to talk to us about uh eye care in the black community and uh we're about to go in so uh mm -hmm. welcome uh dr uh, dr williams uh yeah. tell us what you want us to call you andrew doc williams he said, doc. He said he was cool with it we already had this conversation well doc, you, on the tongue. okay doc, all right then doc, doc williams or doc is fine okay all right well doc uh why don't you go ahead and um just give us a little rundown about uh who you are and um and what got you to to the point where you are right now dealing with eye care and what that means to you yeah, so I um I graduated optometry school uh, about ten years ago, almost ten years ago now, and um, what I guess brought me to optometry in general was the fact that uh, I always wanted to be a doctor um, since I was like five years old. And, and when you're a doctor and you know a kid, most of what you uh, you hear about is you know pediatrician, pediatrician, pediatrician. But once I got to um, undergrad, I realized that there were so many other you know parts of the body, obviously. And then in addition to that, um, going through my histology classes and anatomy courses, the eye just was always way more important, or uh, way, way more um, intricate, way, you know, there was so, and, and it's, it's, it's an extension of the brain. So um, with all of that knowledge and seeing that, it led me to doing research, um, did a research program in California where, where um, we focused on um, optics and things like that. And that pushed me towards optometry. So that that's how I ended up going to optometry school. All right. Now, are you from Atlanta? No, I'm originally from uh, the D.C. metropolitan area, um, Southern the Maryland. Area. <laughs> yeah. oh. Yes, the area. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then uh, I went to Xavier down in New Orleans. I uh, spent four years there. Thank you. Yeah. And it's then, really uh, cool, right? yeah. And then four years in Philly at optometry school. And um, I did a year of residency in Puerto Rico and then um, moved to Atlanta when I was four years now. So we moved here wow. in 2018. Yeah. Residency eye doctor in Puerto Rico. Oh, yeah. man. I don't know. Them people would have got their eyes poked out. They yeah. got their eyes everywhere, baby. Man. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. So I, I studied. No, no. I, I don't even know what that shot is. I don't even know what that is. But. Yeah, no, I, I studied. Um, I studied Spanish all through middle school, high school, and and um, even college. It was my second minor, and I couldn't really speak it that well. So oh. after there was an op, there, I could read and write it perfectly, yeah. but I couldn't speak it that well because there was no one really to speak it with. My grandma was from Panama. That's what kind of sparked the interest. Okay. Um, and yeah, going um, to Puerto Rico was an, a chance for me to not only practice optometry but also. Uh, work on my Spanish, so that's how I ended up down there. So, are you fluent? You fluent now or not? I'm, I'm, I'm close to it. I'm, okay. I'm not completely fluent, yeah, but I definitely uh, conversational in the exam room and things like that. So awesome! That's amazing. That's yeah. amazing. So you can add that to your profile. He's bilingual or trilingual. We need to speak more languages. That's amazing. Yeah, that, that's a lot of things. You know yeah. what I mean? There's a lot of things to be able to do. Um, all of us can't be that talented, Doc. So we'll just uh, brush over that. And I had to work out. over it. I had to work at it. You know what I mean? Making me feel insecure about myself. You know, I ain't accomplished jack. Okay. <laughs> Look, how important do you think it is as far as, um, you know, because you know the dynamic between Black people or Black men more in general uh, as far as health goes or seeing doctors and whatnot. So how important do you think it is for uh, you know, black guys to go get their about, you know, black men to go get their vision checked and go to the doctor, the optometrist to make sure that, you know, everything is working fine. I got my 2020. I ain't gonna lie. You know yeah, what I mean? I'm talking to my, you know, I'm, talking to, I'm talking to my, you know, I'm messing with him right now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So how no, important so, do you think that is? Yeah. So one of the things, uh, a huge misconception is that, um, if I can see something, all of a sudden, you know, my eyes are good. 
that's not always the case. So there, we, there are a bunch of different silent diseases. Some of the silent diseases that uh, most people know about are high blood pressure and diabetes. Like you can have it and not even know that you have it for years while it's causing damage inside of your body. So we call that a silent disease. Um, one of the main, or I guess um, more dangerous silent diseases for eye related uh, conditions will be glaucoma. So you could literally be having, you can have glaucoma um, and your pressures are call, causing damage to your, to your eyes. And your brain is so smart that while that vision is slowly being taken away, your brain is fit, trying to fill in as much information as possible. So you think everything is fine. Oh, I can see perfectly fine away. I'm good. And, you know, 10 years from now, you're bumping into tables, things like that. And that's vision that you haven't, you can't get back. Um, so, and we'll talk a little bit more, I guess, what about what glaucoma is and things like that. But um, that's why it's so important because a lot of times I know, especially I've been guilty of it. My brother, the same way I, I tell him all the time, Pat, you need to get your eyes checked. You need to get your eyes checked. I don't want to know is usually the response. I would much rather not know. And I hear that even in the exam room, like, oh, my wife made me come, but, you know, if you, my wife made me come or, you know, my daughter, you know, is sitting out there. She made me come, things like that. And unfortunately, that's that's one of the um, downfalls of being a black man, especially in America. It's just like you're, you're built to kind of be tough and things like that. And if you have a condition, all of a sudden you're weak and that's not the case. So. <laughs> Made me touch my face. Me while we all me and him just start. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, well. Here's the thing. So as I was, you know, reading a little bit about what I wanted to talk to you about, I yeah. came across some interesting studies, and one in particular that it never even dawned on me to think about is that there are different eye maladies between races. Mm -hmm. right. Different ones affect different races. Mm -hmm. So can you can you speak to the ones that affect? Uh, black people, if there's a difference between black men and black women where those are concerned, and when a person should start eye care, when when should they start seeing an optometrist? Or so, um, yes and no. The, just because, I guess, a disease is more prevalent in a specific community, i.e. Uh, black men may be more susceptible to diabetic retinopathy or hypertensive retinopathy, um, doesn't mean that you can't find it in women. Um, However, uh, I will say that uh, we are prone to those same systemic conditions that, you know, most of us hear about diabetes, high blood pressure, all cholesterol. Those same things have um, can affect the eyes as well. So, uh, for example, um, you've always heard the, the, the saying the eyes are the windows to the soul. The no. eyes. <laughs> That is that is literally that is literally true for eye care. They literally tell us what's going on in the body because the eyes are the only place in the entire body you can see blood vessels without cutting it open. So and those blood vessels, yeah, and the blood vessels tell us a story. So if the blood vessels are narrow, oh, do you have high blood pressure? Oh yeah, I was diagnosed with high blood pressure uh, recently. Or if we see a certain type of bleeding pattern, oh, um, when were your when was your glucose levels checked? For diabetes, oh, I should go get that check. Two weeks later, you find out, oh yes, I do have diabetes. Um, so, yeah, so the eyes tell us so so much about what's happening in the body, um, and that's why um, I feel like it's 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 important to to get an eye exam early. Um, so I wouldn't wouldn't necessarily say um, you know you, you you there's a specific disease for one particular um, race. However, they are definitely a little bit more prevalent. Those those same systemic conditions that you have in in our community are those same things that you see in our community as far as eye care as well. Um, and when should a person start seeing an optometrist? When first eye exam should be at one, technically at six months. Technically at six months. However, um, I missed about <laughs> nineteen thousand doctors appointments, bro. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah. hey. What? Yeah, what yeah. Pediatricians, pediatricians are starting to come around, and and actually and actually getting kids in a little bit earlier. However, the first eye exam should be at one. Different conditions, unfortunately, like retinoblastoma, um, and then sometimes if a if a baby has or a kid has elevated cholesterol, those things can be caught um, early on as well uh, from an eye exam. So the first exam should be at one. And that's not them reading letters or anything like that. Obviously, they can't do that, but you're checking the health of the eye. And that's that's one of the messages that I want 
to make sure that we get out there is that an eye exam isn't just reading letters. A lot of times you go to the doctor, oh, I can see those letters on the chart, I'm fine. That's not an eye exam. That's them telling you, oh, you can read these letters. Um, an eye exam is more so checking the health of the eye. And that's something that we need to make sure we remember. This is blowing my that mind. is blowing my mind too, because yeah. I'm thinking about, okay, the one-year-old, you know, baby that goes, and I'm thinking about now lately, you're seeing the babies that's wearing the glasses. Yeah. Yep. And I always wonder how, if a baby can't, can't tell read. you, they can't they read, glasses on that how baby. do you know they need glasses? So like we are trained, so we are trained to do, an, obviously it's a lot easier if someone can speak, but we're trained to do eye exams without, without you even saying a word. So you can literally come in and not say one word. Um, so for example, a baby or someone that is autistic or has a, a you know, mental disability, uh, cerebral palsy, I've done those exams um, before as well. We're trained to do an eye exam without you saying one word. So a lot of times when, you know, uh, parents will come in and like, oh my, I think my kid just wants glasses. I'm like, okay. And they're like, if they tell you they want glasses, make sure that they don't get them. It's like, they, they can't trick us. We know how to do the exam without, um, you know, without them actually saying a word. I tried to, I remember my brother had to get glasses when he was mm -hmm. eight. He was eight years old. He's my younger brother. Yeah. And it's me. I'm the big brother. Like, I get all the attention. I mean, me, my little brother. <laughs> Not <laughs> real little brother. My mom's son. And so right. he getting glasses and I'm like, I want glasses. <laughs> I'm telling you, Doc, I think I got all the letters wrong. I was like, oh, look. I don't know what that's y'all elephant, elephant. That's the elephant. So and then they and no they glasses. Was like, no they was like, glasses. Nope. Come on, you don't need <laughs> So yeah, that definitely happens, especially with kids are concerned. And it's interesting, man. It's that so eyes are the windows to the soul oh. thing. It's like yeah. that is. So then you said you said something earlier that made me go back to the eyes being the windows of the soul. You said that mm -hmm. the eyes are connected to the brain. The eyes are an extension of the brain. And I never thought about it in that way. Mm -hmm. So so is there like the question I'm, I'm curious about? And, and now you just freak me out with that, because now I'm really thinking like the eyes really are just connected to your brain. Yeah. Right. They plug in. All right, look, look. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So how much of the soul is in the eye for real? Like, is that a question? I think it is. I was thinking about that. Like the eyes are the windows. I was yeah, honestly thinking that the eyes are the windows to the soul. <laughs> yeah. To the windows to the soul, though, because you are soul. seeing all the physical maladies. Yep. Obviously, Doc, you're seeing all the physical maladies. Let me ask you this. When a person comes in and you're looking in their eyes, can you tell if they have any? And you're not a psychiatrist. Can you tell if they're a bad thinking, person? <laughs> can you do that? Can you tell if they're a bad person? Can you tell if they're having some type of like if they're evil or like like you know mental issues? Yeah. Like like can you is, um is yeah <laughs> yes and no. Okay. <laughs> so there were in 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 and, and this is why I say yes and no. So like I guess in a literal sense, no. However, okay. however, there have been studies that are 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 starting to link Alzheimer's mm -hmm. to something yeah. called macular degeneration. Okay. So immaculate degeneration is a retinal condition, um, an eye condition that that causes loss of central vision. Um, there and there are studies that are showing that, um, starting to show that there is a, a, a pretty large prevalence of of patients with Alzheimer's that also have some form of macular degeneration. So wow. technically, yes, there are some mental conditions that are are linked to the eyes. Yeah. That is intense. So then yeah. we can easily say that stress, mental health. Yeah, could be or or we can definitively say that it is connected to your eyesight as well. Yeah, um, yeah, that is that is the case. So I um I had a patient two weeks ago, two or three weeks ago, um saw some uh, um some fluid in his retina, did a did another scan, and sure enough, it was definitely a specific type of fluid, and it was something called central serous retinopathy. Um, and that's a fancy word for his retina being swollen because he was been stressed. Usually, like we're taught that like that person is is like an um, A type personality or something like that. That's not always the case. And um, when I told him about it, I was like, "Have you been stressed lately?" His response was, "I'm a black man in America," and that was yeah. And that was like, "Whoa!" He was like, "I'm always stressed." <laughs> <laughs> he was like, "I'm always stressed." Um, and like in the in the exam, he his his daughter just went to school. Um, uh, he was, you know, saying that it, school was really expensive, things like that. Um, but when I, you know, diagnosed that particular condition, that was his first response. So it kind of, 
kind of made me think. think yeah. About it a little bit. Yeah. I, that, I, I was diagnosed, Doc, and I told you this when I came in to see you. I was diagnosed with that same condition when I was in law school. Yeah. I woke up one morning. I used to have migraines when I was younger. Mm -hmm. and when I woke up, I thought I was experiencing migraines. It was, yeah, but my binocular vision was taking the issue of my left eye and bleeding it together, so I couldn't see. It was like I was looking through a screen. Oh, yep. Wow. And I went to the optom uh, the optometrist, and uh, and I, he said, um, <laughs> he said, yeah, you have serious, serious retinopathy, and I was like, okay, am I gonna die? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so he was like, he was like, <laughs> oh, do I need to wear a mask? <laughs> like, what's going on? <laughs> So he was like, no, it's related to stress, blah, 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 and all wow. so on and so forth, and it's a bleeding yeah. in the retina, and so on. And, and I was like, oh, okay. And he was like, are you in any stress? Are you under any stress? And I was like, well, I'm in law school. <laughs> yeah. And he was like, that'll do it. That'll he do said, it. we yeah. find it in doctors, we find it in police officers, you know, people that are under a lot of stress, and they just, yep. you know, internal. so even with that, like, you know, you stress relief and things of that nature, but what does a person do in those instances like is there any connection between eye health and is it in the inverse obviously it's not the stress is causing the eye issue but like if somebody's having eye issues is there a way that we can things that we can do to relax the eyes even if we still are under stress to mitigate some of those issues no so one of the uh i guess weird things about eye care in general is is a lot of times unfortunately we can't there are a lot of diseases we can fix but a lot of times, unfortunately, um, our goal is to make sure that it doesn't get worse. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So uh, with, I guess, a condition such as, you know, central serous retinopathy, um, our, you know, main treatment is you have to lower your stress level. Um, that's the only way, you know, it'll go away, essentially. Um, or find ways to, you know, kind of cope with that and things like that. Um, so, yeah, I mean... Unfortunately, our goal is to primarily like, you know, make sure that it doesn't get worse. Wow. Is yeah. there anything that you can do to help maintain healthy eye care? Like what what practices can you do other than just trying to, you know, not stress out and go blind from it? Yeah, <laughs> what yeah. Help? What yeah. helps our eye care? So it's always, I mean, just like you, you're taking care of, like I said, the body is the eyes an extension of the brain and then that's an extension of the body. You want to make sure that your your body is taken care of. So um, green leafy vegetables, vegetables with red, orange and yellow pigments, the butternut squash, the carrots, the the, the bell peppers. All of those have so pigments. Bugs Bunny. Bugs Bunny really did have some good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All of those all of those things have um, pigments in them that are going to help with uh, making your vision a little bit more precise. Um, there are some studies that show that omega three. Um, omega-3 oils, fatty oils, um, they help with, you know, dry eye and things like that. You've also heard of them helping like with the heart. Um, so if you're either using a supplement or if you're getting um, a decent amount of fish that have those oils in it, that's going to be healthy for your eyes. Um, obviously working out and, and being active is also good for your eyes as well. So now that I, um, I, um, was also, I want to, I know you want to talk about glaucoma and I definitely want us to get. Yeah, that. yeah, for sure. That, that, that's a serious thing. And that is kind of leading me into the, to this question about the public health crisis. Like I said, as I was researching what we we're going to talk about, one yeah. thing in particular was talking about how eyesight and not checking it, especially in kids is a public health crisis. Yep. Um, the argument being um, not only because of all the reasons that you said, the ability to be able to detect diseases ahead of time, to be able to help save vision in the future, but because when you're five years old and you can't see a blackboard and you're getting bad grades and the teachers and kids are picking on you or you're sitting in the back and you don't want people to call you four eyes and all this kind of stuff, yep. you suffer and your education suffers. So maybe you can speak to how uh, eye care affects communities, specifically black communities, because I'd never had a black optometrist. I've had one optometrist in my whole life. He was Asian. Yeah. And that's when I was a grown man in California. So, yeah. you know, talk, talk to that. Talk to us about why it's important for parents to really uh, be uh, on top of that, where their kids are concerned in, in eye care. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, unfortunately, in our community, we don't have access um, to the knowledge or even to the, the, the services um, that other communities have access to. Um, one of which is eye care, um, decent eye care. 
so a lot of times we 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 wait until our children you know are are, are struggling in school and things like that and we're like oh it, you know it, it was an eye issue i know i didn't start wearing glasses until i was eight i'm sure i had something going on prior to um i've had uh when i was doing screenings in school or even here when i have patients um from this community uh you'll have a a, a parent come in like oh you know he's been you know acting up in school and um, hasn't been getting good grades. And every kid that I ask always asks, like, how's school? How's your grades? How things like that? Um, and not just to, you know, obviously, you know, check on those things, but also that tells me a story about, you know, what you can see and what you can't see. What's your favorite subject? Um, if a kid is like, oh, I, I, I enjoy math, but I can't stand reading because I always fall asleep, that tells me something too. Um, and unfortunately, that that is uh, really, really prevalent um, in our community. So there's a, a school right around the corner from um, from me, uh, from my practice called uh, Cascade Elementary. And I, I've been working with them probably about six months before I even opened up this uh, this practice, uh, because I want to make sure that uh, I won't obviously be able to get to every kid in Atlanta. But right. uh, me wearing glasses at such a young age and probably with the knowledge now that I know I probably had something going on prior to my goal um, is to uh, hope hopefully help mitigate some of those issues in, in the children um, that go to that school. And, and I'm starting to develop a relationship with uh, Beecher Elementary as well uh, and do like vision screenings and things like that. Uh, I've had uh, people in the neighborhood uh, donate glasses so that hopefully when we do these vision screenings and, and are able to find a prescription, I have um, an edger, uh, which is a machine that cuts lenses down so that I can, you know, get glasses to these kids at no cost. And hopefully that can help with um, uh, improving grades and things like that. Because that's all it is. A lot of times, unfortunately, kids, uh, especially, you know, kids in our community, they're diagnosed with um, uh, things like, you know, ADHD and, and put on medication and all these other things. And it's like, they just needed a pair of glasses. That's it. Wow. Like they're acting out in school because they can't see the board. They can't. Like, right. So what are they gonna do? Like a kid right. wants to- be Let us know so we can, you know, be involved with you, 10 yeah. pizzas, whatever for the kids. Yeah, I, we'll go with you there. Please, like, I would love, love to, I mean, obviously right. they ain't gonna just let a bunch of Negroes roll up yeah, in school. Right. But yeah. we are in Atlanta, you know, maybe California. No, no, no. It's a, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a we black school. We love going with you. It's yeah. literally within walking distance of my practice. So wow. it, it, it's, yeah, it's, it's definitely um, a black, predominantly black school. Um, and right now I, we can't do it because of COVID, but right. the second, right. you know, the second they start letting people in and stuff, that is one of my passions. Like we have a, a huge box of donated glasses in the back, um, and and that's one of the things that I I really am passionate about. I never thought about a used glasses drive yeah, to be able to give to the kids because you you know because like we know like I mean I've been wearing glasses also since I was probably was eight years old and I you know I'm just thinking every year you get another glass you pair of glasses yep. because your vision gets worse. Mm -hmm. um, so. <laughs> You know, if I had known, that would be something great. So I think, you know, you probably, if, if you've been wearing glasses for years, you probably yep. have a few pair in your house laying anyway. Around, They're yeah. just laying around. So. Can yeah. we even tell people, like, at the end, if, like, is there, I don't want you to get inundated with thousands and thousands of lots of glasses, but I would love yeah. to be able to tell people to send them we, to we you. We got to get thousands. Yeah, no, I mean, I mean, at our front desk, we have a basket for uh, people that want to do what you say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying yeah. to be serious and help the children. <laughs> Go ahead, Doc. Foolishness. No, no, no. On our front desk, we actually have a basket um, that's been there for probably almost a year now uh, for people to donate. Um, and then uh, I've sent out messages on Nextdoor and things like that. So if you yeah. guys have access to that, they that's can handle it. Fun. Absolutely. They can handle yeah. our solicitation for glasses. So yes. we have any glasses. Um, they can glasses. And you know, yeah. some of y'all, y'all saw uh, Sanford and Son. Yeah, some of y'all yeah. got the great doors <laughs> over there. Y'all got to find them. Go right. Y'all yeah. <laughs> yeah. so send some of the glasses and help the children. And exactly. 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 The way that you do that, please keep us in the loop because we would love to. For sure. Um, for sure. With that project. And that's amazing. That absolutely so, is. Yeah. Now, are, is it that, now is, are there any organizations that do this type of stuff? Or is it really just and, people like you who are going into communities doing it on their own volition? And, and that's where the idea was sparked from. So when I was in school, we had different programs, things like Bosch and, and Sash are, are the, the two ones I can think of. Basically, what those programs did, they collected glasses from their communities and then took them to other countries. 
mm. and, and 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 gave it to you know uh, people which, or, yeah did eye exams and mission trips and things like that which is cool is. but at the same time um the mission you know, field is here first though you know, I was gonna say oh, there's start, start your backyard there, first exactly exactly and there's a need here um so <laughs> even when I was yeah even when I was first you know thinking about trying to you know when I was building my practice or at least trying to, you know, get the word out there and things like that, I was like, Oh, maybe I do, should do like a glasses drive and give to one of those programs. And then I thought about it. I'm like, no, like we have the need here. So yeah. And the second I sent that message out on next door, People, hundred, yeah, just yeah, just people, just people just came in. And, it's such a good campaign, know. and it's so needed. And again, like I just, yeah. it's brilliant. We never thought about it, you know. Mm-hmm. You have not because you asked not, right? That's it. Yeah. All right, no, so no, we we, we really appreciate that information. We're down yeah, to help sure. with that. Now, wanted to bring it back around. Speaking of like helping folks in our hood, helping out folks in our neighborhood, we know we yeah. have this issue with glaucoma. Yeah. What can we do to help? Um, bring awareness to glaucoma, uh, especially, you know, with just our family, you know, whatever we just, my dad had glaucoma. And so now yeah. you got me thinking like, is that hereditary? Is that something it I is. need to be seriously concerned about when it I go? Is. It is. So let's talk yeah. about that. What, what should we be asking when we're going to the doctor as it relates to glaucoma? Yeah. So one of the, one of the things um, that we do here is we do a wellness um, fundus exam. That's one of the first things, uh, first ways for me to take a look and 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 see what your optic nerves look like, um, and then afterwards we check your your history, family history, things like that. Uh, if you have a sibling or a parent um, that has a certain condition, you're you're more way more likely to end up getting that same condition. So, for example, glaucoma, um, especially if you have a sibling that has glaucoma, that just puts you at a much higher risk uh, for for getting it. And the best way to, I guess, help make sure that if you do have glaucoma and and you don't want damage occurring to your eyes is to simply get an eye exam. Uh, So it's unfortunate that I have a lot of patients that are like, oh, I haven't been an eye doctor since I was five and they're like 40 or, oh, I haven't seen an eye doctor in 30 years or this is my first eye exam. Um, That's when it becomes unfortunate, because if I do see something back there, like I mentioned before, once that vision is gone, it's gone. I can't, we can't get it back. The goal is to make sure that we, you know, prevent more of it from leaving. Um, but, and the only way to do that is, is to get an eye exam. Now, hold on for a second. Now, Doc, I'm going to ask you a question, but before I do, I know that this camera up here is about to stop recording, so I need to stop it and start it again, but I want to get all this answer on question. Okay. All this question on, on, uh, on record. So hold on for one second. Yep. All right. All right. Yep. Yeah, good to go. All right. Okay. So, um, so doc, uh, I don't even know if we asked this question earlier, but I, I, I think I know what glaucoma is. Can you, can mm-hmm. you define what the condition is? Uh, for so, us? I don't think I heard that. Earlier. So glaucoma is whenever, so you have eye pressure. Um, there's fluid that's constantly being produced, um, in your eyes all day long. Um, and that fluid nourishes different structures inside of your eye. Uh, just like it's being produced, it has to drain somewhere. So if that fluid isn't draining as quickly as it's being produced, then your pressure in your eyes go up and that is essentially glaucoma. So whenever you have elevated eye pressure that is causing damage to your optic nerve, um, and the optic nerve is the cable that connects the eye to the brain. Um, whenever we see you know, damage there that's related to eye pressure, then that's what we consider glaucoma. Now glaucoma is a general term. There are a gazillion different types of um, glaucoma diseases yeah but um that is essentially the the basic definition of it and so it's important it seems then it would be important to obviously diagnose that early because that pressure going up and down like you said not only can cause various glaucomas but also a ton of other a ton of other issues yep. now let's say somebody's watching this right now and we've already talked about it as it relates to kids but what if you're taking care of a person who's elderly a person who's older they can't speak uh, they have issues or they're not even worried about it. Is there something that we can do if we're looking out for family members as just lay people to be like, man, you need to go get your eyes checked. Is, are, is there a way that you can look at your kid and like do even cursory eye exams without seeing them rubbing their eyes or poking them and be like, yeah, maybe you should go get your eyes looked at. Um, I, not really. Um, okay. Outside of having an eye exam, it makes it really tough, uh, especially for someone that doesn't, 
like if I look at someone's glasses on TV, I can I, I know for a fact that person has AR coding or that person has an exotropia or something like that. Like I, I've been trained to see those things just by a quick lens. However, someone that you know really hasn't had that kind of training, it's really, really tough, um, especially considering how small the eyes are to kind of you know do a preliminary diagnosis. Um, just like the dentist, you, you're told to go to the dentist twice a year. Same thing with the eye doctor. That's once a year. That should be done age one, three, and then every year after that. So um, <laughs> now are there are there any general markers uh, of eye disease? In other words, between one and seven, you're pretty good. But at like eight, you're you're very susceptible to this. At age 15, you might be more susceptible to this. Or is it just person to person? It, so it depends on the type of condition. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I don't know, someone that has seasonal allergies as a kid, it makes it a little bit more susceptible to something called keratoconus. Um, uh, like I said, if you have a sibling that has uh, glaucoma, uh, you want to make sure that that eye pressure is being checked every single year. Um, so it just, it really does depend on the condition. It's tough to do the regular screenings. They just, yeah. We should have been going to the dentist a long to time the eye ago. doctor yeah. every year. What messed me up is when I, I they did, had they have a doctor like you come to the school and he did eye exams because yep. I think I was like nine years old or something. Uh huh. He was like, "Your vision is 2010," which meant like, but what does that mean, Doc? When it says your vision is 2010, that means what? So, for example, let's say someone is 2050. Um, 50 feet away, a person can see a certain object crystal clear, no issues. You have to be 20 feet away from that same object to see it. So 2010 means normal person can see something from 10 feet away. Sorry about that. No, you're good. Um, normal person can see an object from 10 feet away. You can be 20 feet away from seeing it, seeing that same object. So you, technically your vision is better than them because you can be farther away from the object. To see oh, yeah, it. so I thought I was Superman. Yeah, you oh, said that to me, and I was like, "That just sounds dope." If yours yeah. is twenty four hundred yeah. five focals, yeah. so it was like, so it was like, yeah, it was a whole different yeah. thing. But now my vision is no longer like that. My vision, yeah, <laughs> yeah, rough, hey, he had a rough time last week, Doc. He didn't want to say nothing. You, you know how we is. He had a rough time when he had to get the readers. That's what he yeah. called. I was calling. Them I readers, know you got I, the readers too, but he called them the readers. I never. <laughs> That's funny. Um, well, you've talked to us about glaucoma and yep. the importance of um, the periodic eye checks. Is there anything else that you want to say as it relates to um, eye care on that vein before we talk about you and your practice and how people, if they want to contact you, they can do that? So is, any, um, is there any, anything else that you want to talk to us about? Yeah. So, I mean, essentially just making sure that, you know, you get your eye exams um, every year. Uh, just, I guess, spread the word to family members as well. Like that's extremely important. If you look at my social media, for the early on pages, I was never, I mean, even though, yes, I was obviously trying to promote my business, but at the same time, I would always end pretty much every video was like, making sure you get your eyes examined because you could be anywhere in the world. Like you still need your eyes examined. Um, like I said, they tell you so much. There's so many different conditions for MS. Um, sometimes if, if, a tum if someone has a tumor in the brain, like just doing that wellness picture that um, I always have uh, my staff introduced to every patient that can, you know, tell us something about that. So it's just like there's eye exam is just so important uh, for your overall question. body health. I have a question for you before we go. Yes. And I think one thing we, you have mm -hmm. drilled into us and I think the, the, the underline to what we've all been talking about is go get your damn eyes checked. Okay? Check. Um, and I'm going to say that personal, check. personal, testimony here i didn't know i had graves disease until i yep. went and got an eye exam and i which means that i have a thyroid disorder that i didn't even know about mm -hmm. and that trickled down into a whole plethora of things so i have all the respect for getting my eyes checked especially now that i know it's something i'm living with forever so yeah. it is important yep yeah, so it is important so i know we, this is you know focused about men but you know women we have this issue with the thyroid and all of that stuff is connected yeah. You know, speaking of men and women, there is one crazy myth question that I always wanted to ask. Okay. This is a hard left. Okay. So excuse me. Oh, Lord. <laughs> yeah, from the hard left. <laughs> Can you go blind from masturbating? 
That, that, was, that was the myth, though. That's what your parents say all the time. Really? You're going to you have hairy palms, and you're going to go. I have never heard. Grace Webb dance moment. I've never heard that as a myth. Ain't the same either. You know what I'm saying? I ain't trying to make it worse, doctor, okay? I've never heard that as a myth or as a medical condition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There you go. You heard from the doctor. Now. No. <laughs> Are you good? It's so. It's, yeah, it's but just keep your hands. Steep. I think. I think you. I think you're good. I think you're good. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me ask you this. Now. Yeah, yeah. Okay. He like it. No, I'm good. I'm good. I'm just saying. I've never heard of it. <laughs> what about what? What about? It's the Lord's day, bro. He said it's Sunday. <laughs> so, and, you know, so anyway, Doc, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Um, and I, I just thought about Wait, this. Did well. we get a yes or no? He said he's never heard that. I've never heard of it. He said never heard of that. Myth, so ever. basically, we just don't know yet. <laughs> man, that was your mom trying to stop you from being manish. <laughs> he was manish. I actually heard it because I have brothers. Oh, okay. now she blamed the so brothers under the bus. I'm just saying, <laughs> I just needed to know if there yeah. was any type of connection. Nah, sorry about I that. No, you got it. Yeah, that's people. hilarious. <laughs> listen, we're black people. We trying to help y'all. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> so listen. I, um, we we've already talked about um some of the preventative things um in the in the recent in the somebody need to be handcuffed. Somebody need to have their hands behind them as far as prevention is concerned. But anyway. As it relates to eye care, uh, we talk about glasses, uh, contact lens. I guess those are choices that people can, yep. you know, choose as far as um, correcting bad vision. But what about something like uh, uh, LASIK surgery, which had seemed yeah. to be—I haven't even heard people really talk about LASIK anymore. It seemed like it was a huge thing for a while, and we just said, you know, vision isn't just about seeing; mm -hmm. it's about seeing all those, you know, finding all those other maladies that are in the body. Yeah. But as it relates to just vision, if we're talking about corrective um, aspects uh, for people, what are some things that you would recommend? Is glasses uh, is generally the best thing to go? Is you know, LASIK? Did you talk to your doctor about that? Corrective? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's all about um, honestly what you're you know looking for. I mean, I have patients. I, I'll mention LASIK to um, patients every now, especially if they're within like that age range or um, have a you know a very consistent prescription or something like that. I was like, hey, what have you thought about LASIK? If there's a contact lens uh, person that wears contact lenses, but you know for a fact that they're abusing them, um, I'll you know mention LASIK because I think it's a great surgery. Um, I, it, it gives you the opportunity to be able to wake up in the morning and not have to look for your glasses, look for your contacts, anything like that. Yeah, so um, I think it's a great surgery. And every single person that I've talked to that has gotten it says it's the best investment they've ever made. So um, I heard this myth also that yeah. after 40, it doesn't matter. Like after 40, getting LASIK is pretty much counterproductive. Is that true? No. So and, and I always tell my patients, I think it's a great surgery if you're comfortable with the fact that it does not get you out of glasses forever. Um, and what that means is around the age of 40, we all need some kind of reading help. If you're nearsighted, yeah, you can take your glasses off and see things up close. But if you have your glasses on, you're going to have either a boost in your glasses, i.e. bifocals or um, like a line at the bottom or like a progressive or something like that. If you're farsighted, for sure, you're going to need reading glasses, some kind of reading. Help. That's it, every single person goes through that. Um, so if you've gotten LASIK, yeah, you're going to be able to see clear far away. But at some point, you're going to need some help for reading. And that, and that, that usually happens around the age of 40 for pretty much every every person. So. If you're comfortable, yeah. If you're comfortable with the idea that you won't be out of glasses forever, then it is the surgery. For no, if I could, if I could, if I could swim and open my eyes and see, I yep. think <laughs> mm -hmm. it's worth it. Because, like, that's one of the things I think is all connected. Again, you don't realize, like, like things like eyesight hinder things like swimming. Oh, yeah. You know, a lot of times, so we can't go mm -hmm. deep sea fishing. You can't swim with your contacts on. <laughs> yeah, and I've then, had you know, I've had some amazing, amazing moments, and just in this office alone, where I, I put contacts in a in the person that has keratoconus. Uh, keratoconus is a condition where your cornea starts to take like a cone shape. Mm. Um, she did not know that she had it. She had been going to an eye doctor for I don't know 10, 15 years. Never knew that she had keratoconus. I 
I, I diagnosed it. And then I introduced the idea of, of contact lenses for her. She literally ran mm. through the hallways after I put the lenses in. I'll never wow. Because <laughs> she, yeah. she, she can see. She can see. She can see. She can see. And it was it was the most rewarding moment I would say I've ever had um, oh, as an adult. I can only cool. imagine. Man, he was almost like black Jesus. He is black <laughs> Jesus. Black Jesus. You making the blind see. Hey. You making it. Big people were almost big, but you know, I didn't know, it was, I didn't it was know so she was. I didn't say she was. I didn't say she was. was. She could be little, so well, uh, you know, character Conan. So that's what that's pointy eyeball, or as Miss essentially, yeah, nipple eye, nipple eye, nipple eye, yeah, yeah. Oh, no. So, yeah, yeah, it was uh, it was an amazing moment. I've had a few moments like that, but that was the first time it ever happened, and it was it was a beautiful thing. That is, man. That gave me chills. That's amazing. Because yeah. that does yeah. that, and that does. It makes me think about, you know, when mm -hmm. Frank hit a miracle in Bible, Christ uh, healed healed the blind people. That's amazing. Yeah. And oh man, that That's crazy. See her running up and down the hall, brother. That gave. That yeah, gave it, was it was well, dope. Well, I mean, dope. well, Doctor Andrews, like I, I think that you have really, you know, given us some amazing tips Absolutely. today. You Absolutely. You have. Good I mean, just a, another perspective, and that's what we wanted for this conversation. Yeah. Um, you know, if I had to pick a new eye doctor, I would go to you because I think you'd be cool. Um, well, yeah, you, you know, and I think that you would probably tell me one on one if I was a good or bad person. Once you, <laughs> I know you don't want to say it, but you know what I'm saying. That's all another story. Um, how can someone get in touch with you? Uh, yeah. to come to your practice or if they have questions. Yeah, you... so our um, our office is located in Southwest Atlanta, right off of Cascade Road. Um, phone number is 404-549-9996. And then uh, we are on pretty much every social media plat platform at Clearly Vea um, is our handle. Uh, Clearly V as in Victor, E-A um, is a handle for uh, all of the social media platforms. Okay. Awesome. Sounds and I, wonderful. And whoever did that logo nailed it. Like, I love I it. I did too. I was looking at that. I was like, oh, yeah, you did that? You did that? Yeah. <laughs> You see what I'm saying? All the gifts. You got all the talent. <laughs> all the gifts. Yeah, yeah. It was it was a, it was a pretty cool it was a pretty cool moment. I um I was literally uh, trying to figure out different lo lo logos, and I used to draw a little bit when I was younger, but not you know nothing crazy. Um, maybe like maybe three or four sent them off to family members. What do you think about this? What do you think about this? Yeah. Nobody liked anything. I even got oh, one yeah. of them. Yeah, I even got one of them. I could I still to this day can't see it, but they were like. That looks like a vagina. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and I still have it in my phone. Like, I, 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 I could not see it, but like, I, I went, I stopped for like two weeks. What we needed, <laughs> <laughs> hey, who's that in your campaign to bring oh in more men? Right. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was, it was one. I, I, I loved it. I worked on it for a while, and then my one cousin. She was like, that looks like a vagina. And then everybody was like, oh, yeah, it does. I'm like, no, it doesn't. It like that. <laughs> and then um, uh, two weeks later, like I just put it away for like two weeks and then sat in my living room and, and was looking at like different places to do like a, a photo shoot for the practice photos. Mm -hmm. And then I came across the Atlanta City skyline and I was like, that's it. That's it. That's it. Yeah. And then. Yeah, and that's and that's where and that's that's essentially how I think that. Yeah, and the, and the pupil looks like the sun. That's dope. That's dope. That's, that's, that is. It's, it's dope. That's really dope. Yeah. Well, we we you know we love your creativity. We love the conversation. We would love to come back, have you come back one day, and talk about some other things uh, related yeah, to for sure. And if there's any awareness that you want to uh, you know bring up to. the the Gray Sweatpants show that we can promote, let us know. You're going to let us know about the campaign. Yes. We thank you so much yes. for your time. Thank you so much, Doc. I thank really, you really appreciate you. I mean, my doc is so cool, y'all. He'll make you want to poke yourself in the eye. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that. Just no, don't do that. Don't do that. Because then I have to come in. You have to come in. They don't understand, Doc. When I saw it. him at my first eye exam, I was like, Doc, I, I got I to gotta, I gotta hug you, bro. Yeah. yeah. Doc Williams. That's Dude, my man. LA a little too long. I we're was. I need to be around my we're them, we're getting them here yeah, in ATL. Okay. Yeah, that's and it, it, it is cool to be able to connect them with my patients on that level too. Um yeah, so I love it. I love so it. So we appreciate you, um, Dr. Williams. Um, 
Andrew Williams, Dr. Williams, uh, love, appreciate you. We hear you, do, we see uh, the great things that you're doing. Anybody that's out there who's watching this, listening to this, uh, you have any glasses, please, um, and I'll put the address up. I'll put where you can send them. I'll, I'll put your... Um, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Give, it to, give, it, give it to give us one more stuff. time, dog. Give it to us one more time real quick. So our address is 2311 Cascade Road, Southwest um, Atlanta. And then um, at Clearly Vea, at Clearly V is in Victor, E-A is our handle for social media. Right. Thank you, Doc. Bye. Appreciate right. you. Great sweatpants show, y'all. Yes. Signing off. Dr. Yep. Williams, thank you so much. Appreciate man. it, Doc. I appreciate you guys. Be safe. Yeah, you yes, too. Yeah. All right. Bye-bye.